Hello and welcome to this video in which I will take you with me on a journey of crafting a kind of DIY wall of shelves. We will not just have a look at the conceptualization and how it was put together, but also at how I equipped the whole thing with a nice set of LEDs. So before we get into the crafting, we will need to go through a bit of theory first. I will try to keep it short. Let's start with the concept, for whom this video might be especially interesting and what to expect during the next minutes. The initial idea was to create a wall of shelves for my collection of old boxes of PC games. That said, the most stuff following should also be applicable for any other collection, which got some more volume than just a stamp collection. Whether you're collecting figurines, beer mugs or model cars. And in order to make it even more visually appealing, I wanted to also illuminate all sections with LEDs. First up, you should think about the best case scenario. So ask yourself either how much space you would need if you wanted to display everything you got, or look at it from the other side. What would be the maximum amount of stuff you could put into a limited amount of space? And for that, you will need some representative measurements of the items you're collecting, of course. You should be a bit generous though, so that some more special cases don't break your whole system, force you to rearrange everything or make you put items sideways as they just wouldn't fit any other way. In my case, I'd like to have space for the following items. First up, I got about 300 to 400 normal game boxes. And I want to have space for at least 200 of them, but the more, the better. If I calculate with a width of 5cm for each box and a combined height of box height, wiggle room and shelf width of 29cm in total, then I will be able to put about 140 boxes into 1 meter of a 2 meter high wall of shelves. So I would need a shelf width of at least 2 meters, maybe even 3 meters. Of course, if the shelves are higher than just 2 meters, <laughs> that would help as well. But in addition to these boxes, I also got some figurines I want to find a place for. Among these is a Wolf Rider statue by Blizzard, which got a height of over 50 centimeters and the Westland 3 Collector's Edition, which still got a height of over 30 centimeters, and both don't really fit into the same system as the rest. So my idea would be to have a special row in the middle. This would cost a lot of space for the boxes though, so everything below 3 meters would already be somewhat critical. But let's do a reality check. First of all, you need to have a flat and a room which actually provides that kind of space. At the time of my initial plannings, I was still looking for a flat, so this was actually part of my criteria there. Secondly, there aren't really any perfect pre-made bookshelves of this size. Either something doesn't work out, or it gets quite expensive. Unless, of course, you decide for more of a shelf system you find in storage halls, which I don't find that appealing. As I mentioned, I actually wanted to even upgrade the visual appeal by the use of LEDs, and having shelves which look like a storage hall in the first place isn't exactly the best starting point. First thing coming to your mind is likely going to be the Billy systems from IKEA, but these have three potential disadvantages. If you take the narrow version, then the 26 cm of shelf depth are only going to work for normal boxes, and you won't have additional space for LEDs. The other version, with 38 cm, on the other hand, is too deep already. The second problem is the width of the shelves. 1.9 cm are just not enough if you want to put LED rails into the shelves. The biggest problem, however, is that you always have a fixed board in the middle, which means you could split the whole thing into a bottom part, an upper part and a top part to get to the maximum height. And the top part adds yet another fixed board, costing a lot of flexibility. A better choice is a series called PAX. This one got a 35 cm deep version and a 58 cm one, and in its total height of 2.36 meters, it does not have a single fixed board. The problem with the thin shelves stays present though, and while the 58 cm are clearly too deep, you get the 35 cm version in white only, which is out of question for me personally. The black version of this size has been discontinued in Germany for a few years now. In addition, I found IKEA shelves called Bergschuld, which got a depth of 30 cm and which are 2.5 cm thick. 
And then I got the idea to just take these shelves and put them in between multiple cupboard pillars, which also makes it look more interesting. After a couple of adjustments to really make optimal use of the space in my flat and doing a couple of tests with LEDs, it was finally time to start putting everything together. Details about that will follow along the way. Now you might wonder which cupboards I actually chose to become my pillars and how I got out of this conundrum. And the answer to that is that I'm lucky to have a father who's quite a skilled craftsman and who agreed on helping me to cut the 58cm PAX version down to 35cm. Alternatively, you could of course paint it or stick some foil on it, but this would have led to other problems or would have been quite expensive. If you are okay with the white version, however, then of course you could just go get the right size in white. You might also find black 35cm versions on the second hand market, but the chance to get three or four of these in your vicinity is at about zero. So the most practical solution, at least in my case, was using the saw. And right away I encountered my first surprise. Of course I knew that IKEA items are mostly made out of laminated fiber. But I hadn't been aware that some sections in the cupboards are made out of actual cardboard. Due to that reason, and in hindsight, I would recommend to shorten it to even less than 35 centimeters. With just cutting away one or two additional centimeters, you'd actually reach another section of laminated fiber, which is more solid and easier to handle, especially if you are going to add some edge foil, in case you actually want to make the effort in that case. Here you can also see one thing which made shortening the whole thing viable in the first place. The deep version of the PAX system comes with three rows of holes for the shelves on each side. So even if you cut some of it away, you still got two rows left, which can be used to put the shelves into the cupboard just like you'd do normally. When cutting these PAX shelves, it's important to keep in mind that these have to be about 5mm shorter than the corpus itself. As they are slightly set back in comparison, they would otherwise hang over on the backside. In my rather special layout of the room, it was also necessary to do some additional modifications. The one side of the shelves actually ends at a wall. I wanted to rather use the wall of a cupboard there, so I ordered one more PAX corpus and instead of putting it together, I added some distance holders to one of its sides and mounted that to the wall. The other side is also a bit special. There I decided to turn around the third corpus to create an artificial corner in the room. I then used the other side wall of the extra corpus and cut it down to a width of 50 cm and mounted this to the back side of the third corpus, replacing the original very thin back wall. That way I got something stable there, which can also be used for the shelf mounts. For some additional safety, I also added some fixations to the whole thing, so that it won't just fall over after the slightest bump. And that way I also got a pole for an additional curtain. Neat! And as the size of my room isn't quite big enough to use everything in its full size, I also had to cut down one section of the shelves, which instead of 80 cm has been cut down to 67.5 cm. I mentioned that I wanted to have a bigger section in the middle to have space for my Wolf Rider statue. However, I don't really have other figurines which are quite as big as that one. So in order to make better use of the space without actually destroying the look, I added some shelves which I cut down to a depth of just 17 cm. This way it's still looking consistent over the whole width of the shelves while still getting additional space. As I wanted to use the rest of the cutoff pieces, I ordered 30 cm shelves for that, but otherwise 20 cm Bergschutt shelves would have been enough of course. Now the shelves can be put in between the cupboards serving as pillars. For this, two and in some cases more corner brackets are being screwed to the pillars for each shelf on both sides. The shelf itself will then just be put on top of these. You will probably not want to put anything directly on the floor. But I also didn't just want to waste the bottom centimeters, so instead I thought about whether I could actually use that room to store CDs and DVDs. Previously I stored these in very shallow drawers, which worked perfectly. The broader side of CDs is about 14.2 cm and DVDs are 13.5 cm wide. If you add the smallest possible rollers on top of that, plus some additional wiggle room, you are at about 17.5 cm total height for some drawers. The perfect way to make use of the bottom centimeters. 
I ordered MDF fiberboards in a local hardware store, which also cut them to the right sizes. These were used as floors for the drawers. First step was then to screw the side walls on top of these, which also directly included the rollers, which were only screwed in with one screw each. But as you can see, they are going to be locked in place by other means, so rotating around that one screw won't be an issue. This stabilizing wooden slat is then being screwed to the front part, which is made out of a cut down 20cm Bergschuld shell. Next, both of these elements are being screwed together, and in addition there's going to be another wooden slat in the back area for further stabilization and to also mount the back wall in a second. And once that one is set, it's time to add the rollers in the back as well. For further stabilization, there are also some additional angles screwed into the front corners, which weren't really planned in initially. Now the back wall is being added, which in this case is made out of the back of the extra pack scup that I bought. But you could as well just buy it pre-cut from a hardware store for very little money. Lastly, we add some edge foil. And the handles. And some protective felt, so that it doesn't scrub against the sides and is a bit easier to handle. And our pretty perfect drawers for CDs and DVDs are ready to go! Let's have a look at the costs up until now. Costs of the shelves and the cupboard material. For simplicity and to make it more applicable to your potential project, I will just keep all the shelf segments at 80 cm and not have one smaller segment. Furthermore, I'm excluding the price for some felt stickers and screws, in addition to the shipping costs, which can actually be quite expensive. I paid almost 100 euros in shipping to IKEA alone. Alternatively, you can of course drive and collect it yourself. With this in mind, the costs are below 800 euros and of course the vast majority of that was spent for the material at IKEA. Around 76 euros and therefore the biggest chunk of the rest was paid for material used for the drawers. I think the result is pretty good, but we'll have a closer look at that a little bit later. Now, I also got a rather special setup, as I don't have the shelves directly in front of a wall and it would look pretty weird and kind of stupid if you could just look through the whole thing. So I decided to add some artificial walls between the pillars, which should follow a style like you can find in Dungeons of Eye of the Beholder, a dungeon crawler from the 90s. For this I ordered another set of pre-cut MDF fiberboards, which are just a few centimeters wider than the 80 centimeters of the shelves, so that they basically lie on the sides of the cupboards and can't fall forward. Onto these fiberboards I wanted to stick plates of styrofoam, so that it's not just a texture but an actual three-dimensional fake stone surface, just like real stones. They aren't cheap though. <laughs> And when we actually tried to put the stuff together, it also didn't work out as planned. The first issue was that the adhesive recommended to us didn't work at all. The second issue was the weight of the styrofoam in combination with the flimsiness of the fiberboards. So an additional wooden construction had to be added to make it more stable, which was quite a bit of additional work and costs. With these stabilization measures and the right adhesive, it did work somewhat decently. And the result does look really cool. But the amount of work as well as the costs were considerable. And in the end, you won't see that much of it once all the games have been placed in front of it. Of course, that's a bit different if you are collecting something which doesn't block the view that much. In total, the costs were quite high, with staggering 441 euros, which excludes the bad adhesive of course, as well as screws and shipping costs. If I was going to do that again, I would rather go for the alternative instead, with a wallpaper on an MDF fiberboard, which would not even cost 100 euros total. The shelves are already looking quite cool with these background stones, but something is missing. Yeah, even if this is a retro collection, these days you got to have RGB LEDs, don't you? Yeah, thought so. And while I haven't mentioned the lighting before to give this video a better structure, I already experimented with LED lighting and soldering even before I had my new flat and any solid plans for the wall of shelves. The first questions you should ask yourself regarding LEDs is whether you want to control everything with just one central system and if yes, which system you want to use for that. These questions kind of answered themselves for me, as I already bought a Philips U-Bridge some years ago, which I wanted to use here as well. 
For controlling my devices, I don't actually use the app by Philips, but an app called all for You, which you can get for 6 euros and which allows far more and better options for configurations. Philips U is compatible with Zigbee, which means that you can connect other devices to this ecosystem than the ones from Philips, which increases flexibility and reduces the costs. By the way, U and Zigbee can also be integrated into the Google Assistant, if you actually want to. Kerrigan on. Sure, turning Kerrigan on. So, as I mentioned before, my argument against doing everything with the PAX cupboards was that the shelves are just too thin to make proper inserts for the LED rails. And so I'm just using them as pillars. But I want to illuminate these as well. So, what's the solution? On AliExpress I found some nice and cheap cabinet LEDs working with Zigbee, which come with a power supply and 8 to 9 lamps, so that one set is sufficient for each pillar. Though, you should be careful here. <laughs> I did three different orders on AliExpress at the same vendor for the same LEDs and actually got three different models for these LEDs, some of which I could not use here. So if you order something there, make sure you order everything you need at the same time. I didn't install these LEDs right away though. First I took a few steps to make them a little less visible. First one being that I painted the casings as well as the cables black. But this only worked with limited success. No matter what had been used, the color was always very flimsy and flecked off easily, so that quite a few corrections were necessary afterwards. The second measure was to use some angled elements which get in between the shelves and the LEDs. While you would usually have some LEDs where you look directly into their lights, these parts can now be used to mount the LEDs in an angle to avoid that issue. These angled parts are also crafted by hand. I ordered a wooden pole with the same diameter as the round cabinet lights, which my father then sliced into pieces, filed down and painted. For mounting the LEDs, I drilled little holes behind the shelves into the cupboards, which will then lead the cables away towards the hubs and controllers. It's getting more complicated with the main shelves and their RGB lights. Regarding the choice of which LED strips to use, my Philips U LEDs had been my only point of reference in the beginning. While they aren't bad, I didn't want to use them for this project due to several reasons. Among them are the extremely limited options to cut them into the right lengths, the broadness, which is wider than usual, the very high price and also a lack of consistency between their versions. The LEDs you can see here on Amazon, for example, are not compatible anymore with the LEDs I have already. Additionally, I considered the intensity of their light as total overkill. And so I looked for better and cheaper alternatives. And again, I found something on AliExpress. But as with the other LEDs, the offer you can see here isn't exactly the one which I found before. Though in this case you don't really need to worry regarding compatibility. The standard is 4 pins and you will need to solder regardless if you want to have fitting lengths. A price of 20 euros for 5 meters, including a controller, is extremely cheap in any case. To supply power, they are just using USB, so you should either have a USB hub with an active power supply or just a plug which also provides some USB connections. I didn't worry about brightness at all, as it was clear to me that I needed much less than my Philips U strips have. Which was a mistake and misjudgment as you can see in this experiment. After it became clear that these 5V LEDs will not be enough for the middle segment, I bit the bullet and bought a real LED power supply and controller for 58 euros total. And two different 10cm long LED strips using 24V to test around with. And in the end, the COP LEDs won. As you see the individual lights even less, you can cut them into even shorter segments and they are also just using 4 pins, so that I can use the same cables as with the AliExpress strips. The costs however are substantial, with 100 euros for 5 meters of strip totaling to 160 euros if you include the controller and power supply for 5 meters, they are about 8 to 9 times as expensive as the 5 meters from AliExpress. Whether it's worth it or not is up to you of course. My decision was to limit the expensive LEDs to the middle section and to save some costs with the rest. Once I decided which LEDs I wanted to use, I ordered the according strips, the cables and the splitters, which I also bought from AliExpress. I soldered them together and finally got all the LED components finished. By the way, I decided to buy 1 meter extension cables and cut them in the middle and then use 40 centimeters of both ends as connections, which I soldered to the strips so that you could connect them to other extensions just the normal way. 
And here you can see the most current version of my plan on how I want to connect all the LEDs. The middle section will be illuminated by the powerful LEDs having one strip at the top and another at the bottom, each in a rail which is just put onto the shelves, while the other sections are illuminated by one 5 volt LED strip each, which is going to be inserted into a rail which again is set into the shelves so that you will not look into the light directly anywhere and you also do not use up any significant space with the rails. So the next step is to mill in some groves into the sides of each shelf, which will then hide the cables and lead them away to the back and out of the shelf wall. While this went without problems, the groves for the LED rails have been quite a bit more complicated as the mill had a really hard time with it. So what we did instead was to mill in two small groves and then we removed the press board in between. And lastly, we used the mill to remove the rests and smooth everything out so that the rails could fit into the finished growth just perfectly. Lastly, there needed to be some connection channels in the shelves, as well as in the rails, so that the cables can be hidden completely. Finally, the rails can be inserted into the shelves and the LED strips can be stuck into the rails. Though I only put the 5V strips into the rail without adhesive, as they won't generate much heat anyways. The rails in the middle, however, were done with adhesive and then also stuck onto the shelves. And before we check out the finished result, we have a look at the costs of the LEDs and with that, the last cost segment. Here it really depends on which requirements and expectations you have. I think I found a pretty good compromise, but if you are fine with using the cheaper 5V LED strips from AliExpress exclusively, you save about 100 bucks. Alternatively, you should estimate a few hundred euros more if you want to have a bright illumination everywhere. In total, I ended up at costs of 545 euros for the LEDs and almost 1800 euros of total costs. But as mentioned before, I would rather recommend to use normal wallpaper instead of styrofoam, which will reduce the total cost to about 1,500 euros for everything altogether, excluding some screws and the delivery costs. The moment of truth has come. Time to activate the LEDs. Boop. And that looks quite cool, doesn't it? Well, it's a bit empty, of course. But on the other hand, you can still nicely see these background walls. They will be covered up for the most part once we've put all the game boxes onto the shelves. And uh, that will be our next task, so let's get to it.
And with that we reach the end and all what is left to do is to admire and gaze at the collection in its new habitat. In total my shelf wall contains about 336 big and medium boxes now. Though I did leave a few gaps so that it looks a bit nicer. In addition we got the Wolf Rider. 13 oversized Blizzard Collector's Editions and the Wasteland 3 Collector's Edition as well as the Fallout Collector's Edition goodies. As for the drawers, into each of these 80 cm drawers you can either fit about 50 DVDs or about 140 to 150 CDs in two rows. So storing any new CDs and DVDs won't be an issue for the foreseeable future I guess. I hope you liked this little crafting video and maybe I was also able to give you some inspirations and ideas on how to present your collection. All the materials used can be found in the video description. The Amazon links are referral links and if you like to support the channel you can use these whether it's for the linked or any other item. I also appreciate any likes and comments and if you're also interested in my other more game related content like let's plays, reviews and previews then feel free to subscribe to the channel. If you happen to speak German then you might also want to check out my German channels. Thank you for watching, I'm going to lean back now, enjoy the view and allow myself a nice German Malzbier. <laughs> Until next time.